Welcome, doctors. We are beginning the Zubiquity Conference and are delighted to have all of you here at this first UC-wide interdisciplinary species-spanning endeavor. Today's event is presented jointly by the UCLA School of Medicine, UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, the University of California Global Health Institute, and the Los Angeles Zoo and Botanical Gardens. And this is truly a UC-wide event. We have in attendance faculty, house officers, and trainees from UCLA, UC Davis, UC San Francisco, UC Santa Barbara, UC San Diego, and UC Irvine today. I'd also like to personally acknowledge Dr. Phil Nelson, who is the Dean of Western University School of Veterinary Medicine, and the many students from Western who have joined us here today. Well, you may be interested to know who you are. Sitting around you today are physicians, veterinarians, nurses, public health officers, veterinary students, medical students, and a biologist or two. Approximately 60% of you come from the human side of medicine, and 40% of you are represented from the animal side of the species divide. It is our intention today to bring together fields which share much in common and are positioned to benefit tremendously from one another, but whose members interact far too infrequently. Today, we literally want to start a conversation between veterinarians, human physicians, biologists, and others caring for the same diseases in different species. We are asking you, the participants in this inclusive, boundary-breaking endeavor to consider a new pan-species global approach to medicine, an approach which pulls our focus away from the individual patient in front of us towards the critical reality that the health of all of the species on Earth is interconnected. Before I go any farther, I want to acknowledge my co-chairs from UC Davis, Drs. Patricia Conrad and Cheryl Scott, who have been instrumental and tireless and remarkable in making today's conference happen. And I quickly want to just re-acknowledge my incredible team who has truly worked tirelessly, Kate Kang, Wesley Friedman, Cynthia, Cynthia Chung, Julio Lopez, Meredith Masters, and Annie Ha from the CME office, from Joyce Fried's office. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So before, um, before we begin the guts of the program, I'd like to introduce the deans of our institutions. Dr. Eugene Washington and Dr. Benny Osborne. Dr. Washington, Dean Washington, is Dean of the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA and Vice Chancellor, UCLA Health Sciences. Months ago, when I shared the idea for this conference with Dr. Washington, he instantly got it, and I am deeply grateful to him for this tremendous support. Dr. Washington. Thank you, Barbara. Good morning. Come on, for an august group like this, I can get a more energetic response. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. I uh, have been at UCLA now for not quite a year, a little over 11 months, and I have participated in many conferences in this room, and never has uh, this room been overflowing as it is today. So um, I want you to know that you're bringing uh, some magic. Uh, to our institution uh, by coming together with your energy today. And I suspect that this sold-out crowd uh, represents the fact that, one, uh, this is a topic that has truly captured uh, your imagination, as it, I'm sure it has captured the imagination of others who couldn't make it and those who, in fact, tried to but uh, were turned back, regrettably so. And also, I suspect it's because this conference is uh, long, long overdue. Uh, so on behalf of everyone at UCLA, uh, we would like to again welcome you to uh, this conference and to uh, our community. Uh, again, emphasizing the, that we have colleagues here from the UC system, I would like to particularly welcome our colleagues from across the UC uh, uh, system, and especially my, uh, my counterpart and my colleague here, uh, the Dean uh, of the UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, 
Dr. Benny Osborne. I saw Dr. Glazer earlier from UCSF, and I'd like to welcome her. And uh, I've met many other colleagues since I've been uh, sitting here uh, and since I've arrived this morning from UCLA, and I'd like to welcome uh, you as well. In addition, I understand that uh, we have uh, uh, one of our co-sponsors is uh, the Los Angeles Zoo and Botanical Gardens, and I want to welcome its chief veterinarian, uh, Dr. Curtis uh, Ng. And I would be remiss if I didn't, at this point, at least acknowledge the real mastermind behind uh, this event uh, today, Dr. Barbara Horowitz. And uh, it is definitely a team effort. And, and she'd be the first one to acknowledge that the success in planning this is a result of the team effort. And I've met a couple of the, few of the people in, uh, in, involved. Uh, one I'd met earlier in the, in the year, late last year, uh, uh, young Wesley uh, uh, Friedman, who you will get uh, uh, to meet, and I just met one of our faculty members, uh, Dan Bloomstein. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all about vision and leadership, and I want to give you a round of applause for pulling this together. <laughs> this conference, for the first time, brings together the resources of human and veterinary medicine for the benefit of all species. We here at UCLA view it as an important step in developing critical bonds that should exist among veterinarians, wildlife and evolutionary biologists, ecologists, and human physicians. As dean of the David Gaffin School of Medicine, for me, one of the most exciting elements that will emerge from this conference is the Zubiquity Research Initiative which will pair UCLA medical students with UC Davis veterinary students under the mentorship of both of our faculties to study medical or environmental threats shared by human and non-human species. 2011, this year, is the 60th anniversary of the David Geffen School of Medicine, one of the hallmarks of our relatively short existence is how early on we became a dynamic, enterprising center for translational research. That is, taking our expertise in the basic sciences and bringing it quickly to our exceptional clinical enterprise. One of the explicit goals of this conference, in fact, is to expand the beneficiaries of the research we do here at UCLA and the research that's done by our other colleagues in this room so that, in fact, we have a new kind of translational research that has the potential to amplify the value of every research dollar that is spent to the benefit of all species. You have a full, a full, and for, uh, for what I can feel in this room, exciting day ahead of you. Next year, when I look in the Oxford English Dictionary, I'm going to look for the new word. Zubiquity. And when I see it, I'm going to know that it is because of the extraordinary efforts that uh, have been uh, 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 brought to fruition by you in this room. So again, on behalf of everyone at UCLA, I want to uh, welcome you. And personally, I want to wish you an engaging and enlightening and a productive uh, conference today. Dr. Osborne. Well, thank you. It's, it's uh, really a great pleasure to be here with you today. And I also uh, want to acknowledge uh, the fact that UCLA uh, and Dean Washington is, is hosting us and I also want to acknowledge the uh, hard work that uh, Dr. Natterson uh, Horowitz, uh, Dr. Pat Conrad, and Cheryl Scott have, have put forward as they have helped organize this. This is really a very exciting uh, opportunity for us to really step out and do some uh, creative thinking as we go through this process today. So this is a very unique and a very timely uh, activity, this uh, Zubekuti conference. 
This is more important now than ever uh, before as veterinarians and physicians that we embrace uh, comparative medicine and one health approaches to our clinical activities, our research investigations, the development of strategies to prevent illness, and for control strategies to contain and eradicate disease outbreaks. With the global travel and the globalization of the food supply, which at certain times of the year, 50% of our food comes in from offshore, it's no longer if we will have disease outbreaks. It's now about when and what it will be. Before we are put in a, cr a crisis position of dealing with an animal disease outbreak that's impacting people or vice versa, we need to develop the relationships, the understanding, the trust in the expertise of both veterinarians and physicians uh, that they bring to these different challenges. They occur every day. We have a responsibility to work together, to set aside traditional professional boundaries and build bridges to expand and expedite comparative approaches to improve animal and human health. I'm here today because this is so very critical to our future. For more than 30 years, the UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine has been pioneering endeavors in one medicine, one health. And the veterinary oath confirms our commitment to a broader health when we pledge, I will use my scientific knowledge and skills for the benefit of society. So we go beyond just our animal companions and animals that we use in a variety of different ways. <clears throat> this vow has never been more important than it is today. We are here today to forge dynamic partnerships with One Health colleagues, and these relationships, we can't help but deepen our fidelities and energies to One Health. I believe you will leave here having experienced a tremendous program full of information expertise, and perspectives to change how we look at comparative medicine and hopefully spark new ideas and energy in each of us to foster new collaborations and partnerships. This is critical as we move forward and address our global health challenges. So thank you again uh, for sponsoring the program here today, and uh, I want to thank each of you for showing up. This is really exciting to have all of you here and involved in this conference. So thanks. Thank you, Dr. Osborne. That was, uh, that was wonderful and really is a perfect lead into a special, a special person who's going to say a few words next. I mean, today's event does demonstrate the power of collaboration and the opportunities that exist within the UC system and across even our own campuses. Our next speaker's presence here demonstrates the power of crossing not only the species divide, but the departmental divide. Uh, beyond, because opportunities often emerge when we reach out beyond our focused disciplines and consider alternative perspectives on the same concern. So it is with great pleasure that I'd now like to introduce Dr. Daniel Blumstein, Chair of the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology here at UCLA. Dr. Blumstein. A big thanks for, uh, to Barbara for inviting me here to address all of you. I'm really excited to be here today because I think um, this sort of uh, discussion is really, really important. I want to express three themes in some very brief introductory remarks. The first theme is that we're really close. Here at UCLA, the Medical Center and Life Sciences are literally steps away from each other, 121 steps from my office to the School of Medicine, I've counted. Intellectually and academically, we're close, close too. In fact, many of you sitting here today might have studied ecology and evolutionary biology as an undergraduate. Yet surprisingly, there 
too few collaborations between MDs and evolutionary biologists, here or elsewhere. And this is puzzling because the second theme is that diversity matters to all of us. In the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology, we study diversity. We study um, the 3.5 billion years of life, all of life. And some of this life has been successful and some has not been so successful. And these evolutionary and ecological insights about success and failure have important implications for medicine and human health. Evolutionary biology can be viewed as a Rosetta Stone for translational research. A deep understanding of evolution is the glue that holds ubiquity and other enterprises like this together. It provides a timeline and it helps us to consider the ancient impacts of habitat and environment. It helps us contextualize the shared molecular structures that allow us to identify deep homologies. It points out the shared behaviors that might tie, say, foraging behavior in rodents with um, eating disorders, say, in humans. And don't forget, there's a huge microbial world all around us and on us and in us. And these evolutionary and ecological insights um, uh, sheds light on these symbiotic and agonistic relationships, the alliances and wars that are being fought constantly all around us. Modern medicine may stumble blindly into highly evolved ecosystems and wreak havoc. Evolution and ecology can help us make sense of these ecosystems and provide novel insights for treatment. The third theme, inspired by John F. Kennedy, is if not us, who, and if not now, when? By creating groups of keen ecologists and evolutionary biologists and veterinarians and physicians, we can reverse engineer human medical problems and can develop new insights into treating wildlife. And we can otherwise apply our sadly siloed knowledge in many cases to develop more general insights that will benefit ourselves and the world around us. Bringing our interrelated fields together makes a lot of sense and it holds the potential to generate innovative approaches to the most challenging biomedical questions. And perhaps most importantly, maybe we'll change our attitudes about uh, our, our own attitudes and, and more widely the general public's attitudes towards nature itself. Seeing ourselves as part of a continuum of life that extends not only back in time but across taxa creates a culture where we might have another way of justifying, preserving, and maintaining biodiversity. People in this room, all of us, are a kernel or maybe I should use a more biomedical term, a zygote. Um, so let's nurture this zygote, and let's help it grow and thrive, and let's work towards meaningful translational research that crosses disciplinary bounds and species bounds. And I think, hopefully, humanity and all animals will benefit from this. So I'm really excited to be here today. Thank you all for coming, and I'm looking to learn a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Blemstein. Um, for those of you who are UCLA, there are some exciting programs that, that uh, are happening over, up, up, again, a few steps up uh, North Campus. It's amazing.